Welcome to another episode of the Pride of Detroit podcast. This is a very, very special episode because it's day two of our Movember charity stream where we're trying to raise money for the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Uh, this is a very special episode because we have a very special guest. Um, maybe one of the best kept secrets about the Detroit Lions is the person, obviously for Movember, we're, we're growing out mustaches. Uh, it's kind of our thing, I guess now. But the best kept secret is uh, the best kept secret mustache on the team and that is owned by Lions kicker Ryan Santoso, who joins us right now. Ryan, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Love the cause. Love that you guys are doing this. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the mustache because, uh, um, yeah, we grew out some mustaches last year, and it was a lot of fun, and it was it was very weird for me because it was the first time I've grown out a mustache. I know the first time you were around when you were wearing the the Lions punter, you didn't have it. So is this, is this a new endeavor for you as well? Yeah, I figured I'd switch up my position, switch up my facial <laughs> hair. Uh, yeah, it was during quarantine and I was like, well, I'm just going to be lazy and not shave my face. And then I shaved it and I was like, well, this actually looks decent. I might <laughs> see how it looks. And then my wife liked it. So I just rolled with it. That's very similar to, to my story as well. It was just, yeah, it was in quarantine. I didn't have to go out in public and be embarrassed by it or anything like that. And it was just like, Let's see how this works. And yeah. I, I never really grew to like it that much. But for some reason, our audience seemed to really, really like it. Um, but yeah, tell, tell me about that experience. Like the first year with the mustache, because for me, it was it was rough. Like milkshakes were suddenly an issue and things like that. Yeah, it's funny. Like a couple of weeks ago, we were actually like eating ice cream. I think it's called Huddle Soft Serve downtown, my mm -hmm. wife and I. And it was just everywhere. But I, at first it was like weird because people would just like give me like weird looks. And I'm like... Why are they giving me weird looks? And it's yeah. like, oh, well, it's because I have a mustache now. And <laughs> that's not normal these days. So uh, I think it's cool. I think the mustache is coming back and like yeah. um, as, as trends come and go. But um, I like it. Everyone always asks me if it's a phase or if it's for November. But I like it. I, I think I'm going to keep it for a bit. Nice. How, so how long have you had it for now? Uh, I think I started in like June of last year. Okay. So you're over a year mark here. Yeah. So I, I'm committed right now. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so when I had the mustache, I, I, you know, I'm kind of a lazy groomer in general. So like, I didn't. I like. Do you have tips now that you're over a year in on on maintaining the mustache? No, not at all. I just try and clean up everything else around it and just let it ride. <laughs> okay. No, no, like mustache wax or anything like that. No, not yet. I haven't gotten that professional okay. yet. What about what about the rest? Have you have you tried the like mutton chops or? or you know, Fu Manchu's, anything well, like that? That's kind of why I kept the mustache is because I can't really grow anything else. Oh, really? You, no, no beard or neck or, or Yeah, I just, I just keep that clean. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So I I wanted to do something fun here, and I wanted to show you what my mustache looked at looked like last year. And I've, I've okay. it basically went through three different stages, and I want you to grade them on a scale of 1 to 10. Love it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Chat's going to see it before you do, but here we go. All right, let's start with this one. Hold on, let me make sure they can see it as well. Uh, desktop, there we go. Okay, this is the one I'm showing him first, chat. Uh, <laughs> here we go, let's share the screen. All right, there you go. Wow, that is elite. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this, uh, the, the background behind this one is that uh, I, I did some historic baseball for Henry Ford Museum. Very cool. Uh, so, so what do you think? That's a pretty burly mustache there going. Oh, that is up there. I, here's the thing. Everyone always like comes up and is like, oh, like, what do you think about this mustache? And it's like, it's not a comparison. It's not a ranking. I think it's just a mutual respect because if you can pull off a mustache, you have to respect it. Right. It, and it's a confidence is, thing too, right? This is like, thick. This is thick. I love this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Appreciate it. We, do you got a number? Is, is this a full 10? Yeah, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 right there. Okay, perfect. All right, it, it's probably, I'm going to be honest, it's probably going to go downhill from here because uh, <laughs> here's here's what happened next. Ooh. <laughs> a lot of... <laughs> um, you can really okay, see like, how more unkempt context. it is I need here. context. Okay, so yeah, um, so we were raising money last year as well and... and uh, Basically, the the audience raised enough money where uh, they told I died at blue for draft weekend. 
All right. Well, I, I think the 10 has to come to this as well, because one, oh. we raised money for a good cause. And two, okay. you're a good sport for following through. Okay. Wow. I, I, I think I'm grading out pretty well here. Um, all right. This, this one's going to test your patience here, though. Okay. Ready? All right. <laughs> all right. So this is not real. This, this, is, this is actually right before. Like, this was the necessary step to get to the blue mustache is I had to bleach it. <laughs> um a four out of ten <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds about right and yeah like yeah. i said like you can really tell i just let it go like it it is full on into my mouth that that was a miserable bleaching that was one of the most miserable experiences of my life yeah you've definitely got some stray hairs caught in your mouth every now and then oh yeah oh yeah i have a dog though so it's kind of the same thing right there you go <laughs> all right uh thank you for for uh humoring me there uh, before we do let you go, I, I do want to get into a little bit of football talk because you mentioned it, like you changed positions from punter to kicker. And I'm just kind of, I'm curious about that because I think, I think a lot of people that don't understand the position are like, why don't they just sign one to do both and save a roster spot? Um, yeah. why is, does that not work? Yeah, I think there's been a couple guys in the past in the NFL have done it. I think, cause you have to be such an elite, um, perfectionist at this skill, whether kicking or punting or snapping or anything. Yeah. Um, I think it's hard to manage all of it at once. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately for me, um, doing both was my way into the NFL with the Lions my first time. And I was more of a punter then, but I was still kicking. Uh, I was able to do it in the preseason back then. Um, and then just bouncing around all over the place, I really felt like I was more natural at kicking. Uh, played soccer all growing up. It was just a more natural swing for me. And so I really wanted to like, just focus on one. Uh, I'm in year four right now, and I'm, I'm trying to win a starting job at some point in my career and uh, blessed to be on a team, blessed to be in this organization that um, really cares about the players. Um, so for me, I, I just wanted to feel uh, more confident in one. Uh, I still punt every now and then uh, for fun, but uh, really just trying to refine my skills at kicking right now. Does that, is that also kind of an opportunity thing too? Like, you know, it seems like teams kind of stick with their punters maybe a little bit longer than they would their kicker. Yeah, definitely. I think in the NFL, we've seen in the past probably 10 years, I think kickers are on shorter leashes yeah. and uh, obviously because it's points. Um, punters play a huge role in the games, but um, I think it's also hard to find elite punters out there. And like, we're fortunate to have Jack around here is, Played one season, he's a pro bowler. So uh, yeah. very fortunate to have him around here. And it's hard to find elite guys like that. And and what does it mean to you that this team, you know, is not only keeping you around on the practice squad, but I feel like every single week it's, you've been one of the protected players where they don't, they don't want to let you go. Yeah, I'm super thankful for that. Um, I, I love being around this building. There's a lot of familiar faces, a lot of fresh faces. Um, there's really good energy. It's super healthy around here. Um, I, I appreciate them um, seeing value in me. Um, you know, they're always willing to help me any chance they can. Um, so it, it's really cool to have a great group of guys in the specialist group, uh, Coach Fip and Jet. Like, they're all great guys. Having Mule, Mule around, yeah. it's been awesome. Um, so I'm just really, like, fortunate to be here. Yeah, and, and obviously you, you had an opportunity to step in, on you know, in kind of unfortunate circumstances, but – you stepped right in. You, you had a big time field goal to kick there and, and you made it. Tell me what it was like kicking that go ahead go uh, field goal in the Ravens game. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it didn't go our way in the end, but uh, it was really fun um, stepping in and like um, coming in on Wednesday. And then they said, hey, you're playing. It's like, all right, like yeah. I'm prepared for this. I'm excited to play. Uh, it's good to be back in Detroit, close to my wife's family. Um, and, you know, it, it was an electric moment. Uh, it was it was really cool to look up in the stand and see like how Detroit um, responded to that moment. Uh, it was special for me. I'll always remember it. I'm um, thankful for the fans. Yeah, that was definitely uh, one of, one of the rowdiest moments so far this year at, at Ford Field. Mm -hmm. It was it was definitely kind of breathtaking there. Um, let's. I, I want to move a, a little bit back because you've had a, a crazy kind of off season and, and regular season. I mean, I think within a span of a month, you went from the giants to the Panthers, to the Titans, to the lions. Yeah, um, that's correct. Yeah. So tell me about the human element of that, because uh, you know, I, I think sometimes that gets lost in translation where it's just like, everyone hates moving, doing it four times in, in a month. Like that's got to take a toll on you. Just maybe, maybe emotionally, physically, all of it. Yeah, no doubt. It was, 
a whirlwind. It was crazy. Um, you know, the highs, the lows and everything in between, uh, being freshly married, super thankful. My wife was around, um, and it's just new for us, uh, having to go to place to place one week at a time. Um, but we're, we're trusting the Lord to be faithful to us. Uh, he has been every single day and, uh, we're, we're fortunate to be in this building today. Uh, and we're just trying to take it one day at a time. It's all part of a journey. Um, obviously there's, there's goals and aspirations that we have, uh, for my career, but right here, right now, like this is where we're at. And we've always said like, we're at the right place at the right time. And that's here and now. Yeah. I think that's, that's the best attitude that you can probably take in that moment. Just to, just mm-hmm. to kind of keep yourself sane, I imagine. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean it's not hard. Uh, yeah. I think that's, what's hard about the outside world of this building. It's like, we're people too. Uh, and right. people can sometimes just see us on the field as guys in helmets and shoulder pads. Um, but we have families that we need to provide for. Uh, there's a lot of instability in this industry, but it's part of the journey. Uh, we signed up for it. It's not for everyone and that's okay. Uh, but we're, we're awesome to, to be around guys like this. I, I, I always say like, I just wish people outside this building can spend a week in our shoes in this building because we're in such close quarters with people of all walks of life, of all backgrounds, of all socioeconomics. And like, it's so cool, like having one goal and all coming together, no matter race or anything like that. And we're all just coming together uh, as brothers and sisters, all working towards one goal. So it's really cool. Yeah. And that, I mean, I, I know you weren't technically with the team, I think, at the time, but last year when they, they had the social justice movement here, you, that, that message really kind of came through. And, um, and and you know that sort of stuff is happening around every NFL locker room. And, and mm-hmm. I think that you're right. Like that's that's something that that diversity, not just by, by class or race or anything, like it, it's literally across the gamut. Everyone has their own story to tell. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to, to at least get a sliver of your, your story here uh, today. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. And that's what's beautiful is like everyone's got a story and it's not one's better than the other. All of our stories are it's got highs, it's got lows, but it's who we are. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, to close things out here. And, and by the way, we've we've uh, we've had a few donations rolling in. I'll get to them after after awesome. the interviews con- concluded here. But you, you said your wife is actually into the mustache. And that's the part that's confounding to me, because as a single guy, like I couldn't go out in public. And it, it, part part of me was saved because, you know, we're wearing, a lot of us are wearing masks these days, so like I could just hide it. But is was your wife in the minority there, or like I don't? Because for me, like it, oh. it, it's the most polarizing thing to, to do. Most to definitely work. one of few people that <laughs> like my mustache, but it's okay. As long as she likes it, then we're all good. Yeah, I mean, if you can get married in it, then like you guys yeah. are set, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I had a bunch of people who were like, "Hey, you gonna shave it for your wedding?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, Ryan, I do really appreciate the time, um, I, you know, swinging by for a good cause, uh, getting, letting us get to know you a little bit. Um, hopefully, or, do you got anything fun planned for, for the bye week? I know you guys got a couple days before you're fully clear, but uh, but any plans? Yeah, focusing on getting better today and tomorrow, uh, putting in work in, and then going to go work with some coaches out in San Diego just to sharpen my tools and get better. Nice. No no real break for you then, huh? No, no. It's it's. It, I mean – you find some time here and there. Anytime I get to hang out with my wife, it's a re- really good time. So. There you go. All right, Ryan, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Thanks so much. And, and good luck after the bye. Thanks. Have a great one. You too, man.